Hello, I'm the Great Orbax, and we're here today with Dr. Mike Masses to discuss rotational dynamics. <laughs> okay, look, we've been talking a lot about this new quantity, a moment of inertia, and I thought it would be good to do an example where we calculate that for a particular thing. Now, one, one example of where moment of inertia comes in is that if you apply a torque to an object to get it to rotate, the moment of inertia of the object reflects how much angular acceleration it's going to have in response to that torque. So let's take a look at a classic problem. Um, this is uh, one called the cabled wheel. You basically just have a wheel or a disc um, and you allow it to rotate about its center point. Now if I apply a force to this to actually make it turn, uh, you've got the case of a pulley, you've got the case of a drive shaft on an engine, sure. um, any sort of many applications that you can be taken into account here. Now, if uh, we've got a force, let's give it some kind of radius. Let's say this is 20 newtons. Let's say it's a massive wheel that has a radius of one meter. Okay, so, so, so then it produces a torque of 20 times one. That would be 20 newton meters. Right. All right. I apply this force. We pull it. It causes it to rotate. Um, and as it turns, we have to be applying it for some amount of time. So okay. we say we pull on this for five seconds. So it's turning for that period of All time. Right. It starts at zero rotation. So zero uh, revolutions per second or radians per second. Um, and it goes all the way up to 100 rotations per minute. Okay. 100 RPM. Uh, we need to put that in SI units. So that's going to be, uh, it's about 10 rads per second. Okay. So for those of us who don't want to do it in our heads, <laughs> uh, 100 <laughs> revolutions per minute. Okay. Well, all right. To convert to rad per second, one revolution is two pi radians. So, so we need, need two to... pi radians and then we need to revolution. Right, and then we'll need to convert from minutes to seconds, so 60 seconds in one minute. Great, so our minutes cancel, our revolutions cancel. Two times 3.14 is six over 60, so it's 10. It's a 10, there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, um, now we don't know how far it rotates and we don't know its acceleration. And what's important here is that if we want to calculate the moment of inertia, knowing the torque, we need to get alpha. So let's do some kinematics here. We have the initial final, velocity, we have the time, so we can get alpha as delta omega over delta t. And it's just literally the rotational equivalent to what you did in the linear case, right? Where you're solving for acceleration was velocity per time, alpha is omega per t. You've got 10 minus 0 radians per second divided by 5 seconds, giving us a value of 2 radians per second squared. Excellent. So we have alpha, we have the torque now, we can get i. Right. We want to solve for that moment of inertia. That moment of inertia is equal to the torque divided by alpha. All right, and that's 20. I'm putting the equal sign. 20 newton meters divided by 2 rads per second squared. And it gives us a moment of inertia of 10 newton meters second squared per radians. Okay. The classic unit <laughs> that we all know and love for moment of inertia. A moment of inertia is always a mass times a distance squared. So in SI units, and we've stuck with SI units, so we'll have kilogram meters squared as our units. And that's, that's worth checking out to relate those two. Why don't you try that <laughs> okay. at home?